Well, people often ask me, why am I raw vegan or why or how did I go raw vegan? What led me to this path? Why I'm inspired to be a fully raw vegan? And the answer is simple. It's just freedom, freedom from suffering. There's a lot of suffering on this planet and I don't want to be part of it. I don't like it. Um, if anything, I'm here to help with the suffering, alleviate the suffering. And there's a very simple truth to suffering is that we either align with natural law or we don't align with natural law. The further out of alignment we get, the more suffering there is. The more in alignment we get, the less suffering there is. It's just aligning with how the universe works. Whether we realize it or not, we're always in some sort of balance or harmony with natural law. So my goal is actually to be a, a student of natural law and the universal kind of uh, principles of spiritual alignment to make our lives better, but to really alleviate suffering, not only for myself, but for all of humanity and all of the precious animals that we share this planet with who are so innocent and vulnerable. And yet, you know, humans are a little bit like a bull in a tulip patch. We come and stomp through. For sure. We don't have very much elegance to our our style and our uh, persona in general. And so I, I that's a part of a, our culture and the way humans work that I don't like so much. And so I decided sure. <clears throat> at a young age when I was 17, and I'm 50 now, I decided at 17, I was going to do something about it. So I went vegan at that time, vegan for the animals, ethical vegan, all the way, ethical vegan, could have cared less about health. And over years of being vegan and failing and eating animal products and then back to vegan and back to animal products, back to vegan, it slowly has come clear to me that there's just no other path than whole, raw, undenatured food aligning with Mother Nature as intended for our body. So then the goal for me becomes not just a vegan diet, but how to master a vegan diet. That's what right. led me to raw food. Mastery, self-mastery, spiritual mastery, mastery of this domain in every single way. And that doesn't include just diet. That includes physical fitness and uh making money or being successful, business, whatever you want to call it, and also my relationships in my life with my family, friends, circle of influence, colleagues, and then also my service work, how I pay it forward and how I create a, a building blocks, the building blocks and a ladder for the future to grow upon so we can actually alleviate the suffering on this planet as much as possible. So I'm kind of like a self-appointed uh, missionary to uh, mm -hmm. improve, awaken, and help humanity evolve and awaken to a new paradigm, the next best version of ourselves, what's possible for ourselves. I'm not interested mm -hmm. in the status quo. I'm not interested in the mainstream. I could care less. I've never been interested in the mainstream. I like doing things different. I like standing up and speaking for the truth, regardless of how brutally honest that is. Right. Um, so that's kind of who I am now is that uh, I support people through my group coaching program, which is very, uh, very supportive system for people to right. actually educate themselves on the raw vegan path. And I have thousands of clients who come through mm -hmm. my program. And then I also speak on my platforms. I'm raw vegan rising on Instagram and YouTube mm -hmm. and Facebook and TikTok and all of them. And that's where I share my message motivation, inspiration around the diet, the lifestyle, the fitness, the leadership, the mindset to be an absolute badass in your life in every single way. So just the last thing I'll say is for me, it's not so much about whether vegan is healthy. That is a very um, past conversation. I'm on to the next conversation, which is how do we thrive on purely raw living foods only? Right. That's the only question for me. And that's what I educate on and teach on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. That's amazing. So um, just kind of speaking a little bit on the consciousness piece, like uh, I, I have found over the years that um, the awareness and the consciousness that comes in as you are either transitioning or once you start implementing more raw foods and then of course talking about things like doing like a juice cleanse and really getting into those deeper layers that it's almost an organic process that happens that some of those emotions those old woundings will just organically come to the surface 
And of course, the physical side of uh, detoxing is hard in and of itself because we're dealing with addictions and all these types of things. But what's your experience with people dealing with all of the emotions that surface up and pushing through that? Like how transformative that can be in the healing process because I think oftentimes it's overlooked in the space we just think oh it's raw food you know where it's a physical thing but it's actually much deeper than that yes indeed it is Mm -hmm. it's really a personal leadership problem and leadership Mm -hmm. requires vision if we're going to be extremely successful at whatever we do including being healthy transitioning to a vegan diet, transitioning to a raw vegan diet, whatever level of health we're at, it requires vision. We've got to have a reason bigger than ourselves to do it, or we are not going to do it. The mainstream will come in and hijack our mind and hijack Mm -hmm. our um, efforts and our activities. So it will say, you've got to do this, go along with the status quo, go along with what everybody else does. Oh, why bother being different? So if we're not hooked into a vision bigger than ourselves, and a vision bigger than ourselves has to extend past our family, past Mm -hmm. our own personal life and our own growth and and thriving into some sort of vision beyond our, our own lifetime generations ahead. We have to have something bigger than our own life and our own family that's going to motivate us. Health doesn't motivate someone to get healthy. It never has. If Everyone wants to be healthy, but nobody is. Why is that? Because they're not hooked into a vision bigger than themselves. And uh, people might have food addictions, emotional addictions. They might play small in their life. They might not start that business they always dreamed of or find that love relationship they always dreamed of or move into that big house they always felt like they should deserve. Why right. is that? That's a leadership problem within our own mind. Leadership mm-hmm. is simply just saying, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to come save me. Nobody's here to listen to me whine and moan about my problems. I've yeah. got to get up off the couch and I've got to figure out how to make a huge difference in the world. And that right. requires a vision and a motivation, a big why. So capital W, capital H, capital Y. You've mm-hmm. got to journal that. You've got to come up with a life mission and purpose for yourself that motivates you and enrolls you in who you get to be. Right. So if you understand the skill of how to enroll yourself in who you get to be, you can apply that to every single aspect of your life. And that's why I always say how you do one thing is how you do everything. If you understand how to be successful in starting a business, you can apply that to be successful in raw vegan and vice versa. If you are a successful raw vegan and you absolutely dominate it, you master it, you can apply that to starting your dream business or having your dream love relationship or living in your dream house. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. It's an illusion in our mind. The only thing that's Mm -hmm. truly real is the value we bring from within ourselves And everything else just will organize around that value. If we truly tap into the value that we have within ourselves to be worthy of thriving, worthy of making a difference for generations to come, worthy of being a voice in the awakening of humanity, if we feel that worthiness, that's when we will be able to absolutely be uh, successful in everything we do and tap into our real leadership skills and enroll ourselves in the vision of who we get to be. That's it. Yeah, right. Um, I heard you speak on another podcast about when you were, I don't know, maybe you're in your 20s or something, and you were saying that that energy of kind of wanting the convincing or that, you know, you would, an argument might ensue at the dinner table over the diet. And I re- and I totally resonated with that because when I was also in my 20s, when my kids were young, I was like a hardcore raw vegan with the signs and so I think now like moving now like you into my 50s I see that everyone's journey is their own and that we're really just responsible for our own journey our own sovereign journey and what you've spoken about the hero's journey which is for us it's for us to define as individuals and all we can do is be kind of the guiding light to help others so I'm I'm just uh assuming that that what you just said it's just kind of reiterating that hero's journey notion of that we are on our own journey and I love what you say that it's really about mastery and self-mastery um going down this raw vegan lifestyle because it's not easy. It's not easy in this society to um, make the decision to be a raw vegan, especially when you have children and you have family and all of this kinds of all of these kinds of things. 
So how so how do you stand right now the notion that detoxification is more important than nutrition in this day and age? Yeah, detoxification allows the body to be receptive to the next step. So it is a journey. Right. Um, thriving on lighter foods, higher vibrational foods, and living foods requires kind of the stepping stones uh, out of lower density foods, cooked foods, and animal products. So that's a process, and that process could take years to decades, depending on who we are and mm -hmm. our commitment level, our big why, and our own leadership skills around transformation. Right. But I always say to people, if we can just focus on detoxification, we'll get there quicker. A lot of people might say, but I don't feel full or satisfied on raw food. That is a, a detoxification issue. The gut needs to be detoxed. The microbes need to be transitioned. We really actually need to master the transition to right. higher vibrational living foods. And that transition requires extensive bowel detoxification to remove biofilm and plaque and accumulated waste, transitioning the microbes, alleviating the pressure in the interstitial fluids and the cells and the acids that have built up in the body, because all of these accumulated toxins will keep us in a certain status quo. The body becomes comfortable at a certain level of health right. and transitioning out of that level of health to a higher level of health requires a transition. The detoxification is the vehicle, the method of how we transition. But a lot of people think it's about the food you eat and it's actually about mastering the transition. How are you going to transition your body and your gut microbiome to thrive on raw living foods? Well, that process will be through multiple sources, through eating raw vegan over a consistent period of time, uh, or detoxing the gut through juice fasting or water fasting, or um, you know, mono fruit cleanses or whatever it is. You know, cleansing and detoxification elevates us. It resets the neural associations with where real life force comes from. And then instead of thinking that life force comes from like a burger and fries, we start yeah. to realize that life force is in the living cells of all living you know, plant right. matter so that we get real true life force comes from the sun and the electrical activity and the living enzymes that fuel every metabolic process in the body. So it's not about the food so much. It's more about detoxification, elevating the actual physical matrix of our body to a higher level. Right. So I just had a few weeks ago, I interviewed Professor Spira and he, you know, talks about the mucosal diet healing system and how really the, the foundation of that is all about transition. So, but using maybe perhaps some cooked foods along the way to transition into a raw food lifestyle. So do you, are you in alignment with that kind of Arnold Eretz um, transition and the protocols that go along with that? Oh, Yes. Perfection is really a disordered thinking. Perfectionism mm -hmm. is actually low self-esteem. We do not want to align with perfectionism. Perfectionism right. doesn't help us master our life, master our leadership, master transition. Perfectionism is saying, well, I can't achieve perfection, therefore I might as well not try. That's what most right. people so what we really want to do instead is say yes to the calling, the subtle whisper in the back of our mind that has, has that feeling that our heart is being called to something better, a better version right. of ourself, an awakening to something that supports our well-being at a higher level. If you have the call to go mm -hmm. raw, then you just need to say yes to the journey. And this is where it is really in alignment with the hero's journey. The mythology of the hero is that we must face our fears to... Mm -hmm excel, elevate, awaken to the next best version of ourselves. Through facing our fears, we learn the method. We learn the tools. We learn what's correct for us because yes, biologically, we're all going to be the same. We all are blood cells and lymph, and we all thrive on the right diet for our species, our species specific right. diet. But in the psychological journey, we all might have a different path, you know, and we might become a, a superhero or a master teacher or a guru in different ways on our journey of self mastery. So we don't want to right. try to have some perfect vision of what that's going to be like. We need right. to go through the death and rebirth of the identity. And that is right. the hero's journey. 
So when we stay, when we say yes to the hero's journey, often a mentor will appear. And in in all the great mythology of the hero's journey, it, there's someone to usher across the usher us across that threshold of resistance because the hero feels reluctant, flawed, unworthy, unready, mm -hmm. and completely unwilling. And so the hero never accepts the the calling. There's some sort of almost supernatural a guide or guidance that happens mm -hmm. that can be a mentor someone you resonate with that's what i do in my raw vegan heroes membership community group coaching mm -hmm. program is i offer that kind of mentorship for people who have right. the calling to usher them across that resistance uh, threshold mm -hmm. when we say yes though then we embark on an unknown journey, leaving the comfort of our known world to the discomfort of an unknown world into the <laughs> darkness facing our deepest fears. And in that process, we die. A part of ourself dies, the old part. So the part of you that holds on to cooked food, eating disorders, low self-esteem, any kind of uh, playing small, holding back, people-pleasing, perfectionism, all of that is going to die off as yeah. we face the fear. And through facing the fear, we find the gifts, the nuggets that the universe has for us. It's in our traumas. It's in our resistance. It's in the letting go. When we let go fully, we get the gift of what our path is. That's going to be right. different for everybody. And so then it's about integration and bringing that back home to ourselves to create a whole new elevated sense of normal where we can share that with the world. And that's the Raw Vegan Hero. I outline in my Raw Vegan Heroes membership, the Raw Vegan Heroes success path. And that's mm -hmm. going from a guilty non-vegan to a Raw Vegan Hero. And the pro right. pr process and emotional transformation to become a raw vegan hero in your life and how I outline the step of the raw vegan hero, which is the ultimate fulfillment of our own hero's journey, is bringing your gifts to your life's legacy. This is living into your vision bigger mm -hmm. than yourself and fulfilling your true purpose on earth. And that yeah. is going to include raw living foods. Because as long as we are eating low vibrational cooked foods, especially animal products, we are in a matrix of mind control. And the low vibrational foods keep us from seeing and perceiving our higher purpose and destiny correctly. It's almost like a veil or a shroud. Right. It keeps us locked in a comfort zone of fear and low self-worth. And it's only through this hero's journey of letting go of the old self and letting it die off that we mm -hmm. find that courage to live into our legacy and be the leader of a higher sense of purpose for our life. That's a miraculous mm -hmm. thing to accomplish. And it's not complicated. It just is uh, the hero's journey and the process of saying yes. So I always encourage people, you don't have to know what to do, how to do it. You don't have to do it right. There's no one on this earth that says you have to do it right. It's only mm -hmm. saying yes. Say yes to the journey. Say yes to the calling. Say yes to the little stamp, the imprint, the, the whisper in your heart calling you to a higher vibrational way of being. That will lead you down the path that only you can live. And through that, right. you'll find your gifts. You'll find your vision. You'll find your purpose. You'll find your legacy and the true mm -hmm. fulfillment you have to offer on this planet. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and I think, again, that ties into like the mentorship piece of being so important for people who are embarking on that journey. Because like I said, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that comes up and if you don't have the knowledge or the awareness or the tools to be able to handle those things, I think that's where a lot of people just kind of abandon ship. And it's so important to have a mentor to be able to guide you and to let you know you're, you're on the right path. This is okay. Um, I just also, I, I interviewed Troy Casey and, um, one of his legacy, uh, one of his pillars in his book is legacy and the importance of having a legacy, um, as being actually the most important pillar. And I just couldn't agree with that more. You know, what are you creating? What are you creating in your life for yourself, for your family and, and, and everything else that goes along with that? So um, do you do you feel then when it comes to consciousness that if we are 
uh, making choices and we all have the choice to eat whatever we want. But if we're making the choice, for example, to eat um, animal products, the level of consciousness that we can actually obtain is going to be somewhat, mm, let's see, it's just going to be a little blurry, for lack of a better word. Would you be in alignment with that? There's no question in my uh-huh. perspective, but everyone is called to a different level of right. experience yeah. on this planet. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's called to the level of personal excellence that I strive to achieve in my lifetime. I've been on this mission for what I feel kind of spans multiple lifetimes. I came into this world with a thread that connects me to leaving animals out of the equation of diet. I was born with it and it took me to be a kid. Once I started to kind of wake up in my teen years, I started to remember my full commitment to this level, but not everybody has that. So. Yes, we're going to experience great, um, profound awakening experiences, including animal products in our diet if we follow the right paths of discipline and leadership. But there is a matrix of fear survival with animal products that is just real that will keep us locked into a paradigm of survival that we cannot get out of any other way. By avoiding animal Mm -hmm. products, we actually free ourselves from the matrix of the fear survival that has been part of our ancestral experience. Now, everybody says we should eat like our ancestors, but I say the opposite. We need to actually evolve past our ancestors. And as long as we adopt the trauma of our ancestors, we will continue to stay traumatized. Mm -hmm. Eating animal products is a a trauma response out of fear, out of survival, out of uh, living in environments, conditions, and uh, uh, areas where we have to kill to survive. And killing to survive is not a higher vibrational way of of living. We simply don't need to, for one. And, you know, we can see hints of this in all spiritual teachings throughout all history, in every spiritual text that's ever been written, that we should not kill. And when we can actually experience a life where we do not kill, it elevates our perception, our connection, our awareness. So I will absolutely say, hands down, in my lifetime, my experience, what I believe to be truth based on my personal experience and my studies and my intuition is Mm -hmm. that animal products are uh, just a crutch and holding us back. And it will only be uh, left behind as we evolve as a species. Animal products are not going to be part of our future of mankind. It's just not possible because we will live on higher vibrational foods. If anything, we'll develop technologies to live on fresh juices and enzymes and stuff. We won't even need to eat such dense foods. I mean, fast food, animal products, factory farming, this is all extreme trauma response that is rooted in a level of self-deprecating fear and trauma that just is not part of a better way of life at all. And this is actually my personal mission and purpose on earth is to shed light on this and say, Mm -hmm. as much as a lot of the guru people out there say, we got to eat healthy meats to be healthy. It's just absolutely not true. It's absolutely not true. It will hold us back from what we can really achieve on our hero's journey. And that's part of facing the fear of the hero's journey. If we are afraid of who we will be without meat and dairy and eggs, then we, unless we experience that death and rebirth of the self through that threshold of fear, we're never going to experience it. And we have no idea what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I've done both. I've eaten animal products. I've eaten meat and I've eaten vegan cooked and I've eaten vegan raw. And I've experienced and experimented with all the thresholds of fear. And me on my personal journey, I refuse to let fear dominate what I do and how I think. And I refuse to let the fear of killing and and using death and killing as a survival strategy to influence my thoughts of what's possible for me. I refuse Mm -hmm. because it's just not a vibration that I resonate with and want to be part of. That means I will be vegan, strictly no animal products for the rest of my life, no matter what it means. I I will not participate with it. Yeah, I love that. And that just, I mean, that kind of ties into what I was going to ask about the ancestral trauma piece and how that's also connected to 
like redefining what that is. And yes, of course, if we're going to be living in our ancestry, then we're really not stepping into the new and evolving past that. It's just so that makes total sense to me. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're going to kind of wrap it up here. And I would really love to do a part two, because I really had like a whole section on um, like, I'm like you, I'm really into um, resistance training, I have a background in powerlifting, and I'm, you know, kind of in the same age group. And there's a lot of um, questions in and around that for people in kind of the 35, 40 plus group, which there are more and more coming into this space, which is amazing. Um, and I think there's a lot of confusion, um, especially mm. on the internet. I mean, people like we just talked about, I mean, just for example, the carnivore movement is a massive movement on the internet and people get super confused, right? Mm. So I just think it's so important to bring, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this podcast is because I want to bring awareness um, that you know, these things are possible. In fact, they're, they're more than possible. And with the right coaching and with the right mentorship, it just makes things, you know, of course, there's going to be an element. That's the whole thing we talked about the hero's journey. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. But when you get to the other side, it's just, there's this feeling of just reclaiming your life. And it's amazing. So um, so why don't you just tell everybody, again, where can people find you? Um, for I'm assuming you do like one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, that type of thing. Yeah, thanks, Shirley. Well, let's make it a date. We will do a part two, and we will talk yeah. about the absolute uh, importance of raw vegan protein sources, how to build muscle, and how to yeah. absolutely be the highest uh, in the highest health for yourself as a raw yeah. vegan or as a vegan, and uh, okay. li literally dispelling the myths that we need animal protein to be healthy or build muscle. Let's yeah. do that video for sure, We're because do it. that's an important <laughs> one, and I love talking it. about it, and I'm a living yeah. example. You if are. someone is interested to learn more or follow me, social media, Instagram, Raw Vegan Rising, I have a group coaching program called Raw Vegan Heroes, which helps people say yes to their hero's journey. We have okay. over 2,000 members in my group coaching wow. program. They get instant downloads for how to detox the body and cleanse out the waste inside of the bowels. And then also we have a support group to help us through every stage of fear and questions and unknowing. And this is how we do it is we do it together as a community. Right. Mm -hmm. So I am focused on building a community to support people at the highest level of accountability. We don't need knowledge when we have accountability because we can see others doing it in real time and we can emulate their actions. We can learn from what others are doing. So in my group program, Raw Vegan Heroes, for instance, every single day people are sharing updates, meal ideas, recipes, what they're doing that works, what they're doing that doesn't work. And we mm -hmm. can learn from each other. I don't claim to be the expert. I know the power is in the community. So let's pull all of thousands of raw vegans from around the world, thousands of aspiring yeah. vegans and raw vegans from around the world and learn from each other so we can take this thing to the next level. And this is an awakening journey. This is a movement bigger than me. This is a movement bigger than all of us. The Raw Vegan Heroes movement is definitely for you if you have the calling in your heart. And you can find that information uh, in the description box of every video I do on YouTube and Instagram, but also on my website, rawveganrising.com, uh, under okay. the membership tab at the top. Membership, Raw Vegan Heroes, it's community building. It's going to take us to the next level through the power of learning from each other. So that's what I do. That's how I support each other. And it's my absolute pleasure to create the culture of healing and excellence without animal products and without cooked foods in our lives. Yeah. And what I really love about you is that you are, you embody both, you embody both the physical and you embody the emotional spiritual side, which like I said, at the beginning, a lot of times we kind of go down, we might pigeonhole ourselves into, you know, this is the diet, but it is the diet, but it's so much more than just the diet. And I just feel like you really embody both of those. So mm. I love that. Yeah. It's amazing. Thanks so yeah. So much. But, of yeah, course, thanks, Shirley. put up a, a part two and we'll dedicate that to the whole weightlifting, building muscle, protein requirements, macronutrients, all of that kind of stuff. And that'll, we'll make that into a part two. It's amazing. Yeah. Excellent. Looking thanks. forward to it. I'll see you in the next one, Shirley. Have a great day. Okay.
You too. Bye, Shane. Thank you. Bye-bye.